Hey guys, Movie Fan here to continue our Megazord project. So far, we got every part of the body done except for one, and that's the head. So that's what we're going to do today. Now first you want to start off by making a very basic helmet. But before we get started, I should tell you that I lost almost all the footage on how to make a basic helmet. Except for how to make a crown, which is where you always start when you're making a helmet. And I didn't want to waste all my duct tape by recreating it. So instead, I just grabbed paper and recreated a makeshift helmet that way. Okay, the first step is to make the crown. And that's the easiest part. All you got to do is just use this simple trick that we all learned in elementary school. Just cut some pieces of cardboard and make a basic circle that goes all the way around your head. Tape it together and cut two more pieces. One will go over the top of the crown like this, and the other will go over the top of the crown like that. After that, you'll want to fill it in with various pieces of cardboard. It doesn't have to be even either. It just needs to fill in. That way you'll have structural strength. Next, you'll want to cut yourself some big square pieces of cardboard. Now this is supposed to cover your head, so you'll have to measure it to the bottom of your crown where it's going to attach all the way to the bottom of your chin. And of course you'll have to cut a big square eye slit so you can see. Don't worry, we won't leave it at that. When you get your basic template built, it should look something like this. For the next stage, we're going to move to the forehead. Now you might remember the Megazord has this interesting U shape right there. The only way you'll be able to do this is to put another layer of cardboard over the entire helmet. And while we're putting this new layer of cardboard over the old one, we're going to make a few adjustments on the face. Now I'm showing you this image to give you a fair idea as to what I'm going for because it won't look right with paper at all. So bear with me. What we're going to do is this. We're going to cut the cardboard to where it goes around the entire head, but we're going to leave this big gap in the face and we're going to duct tape it together. By doing this, it'll naturally have that look of armor on the cheeks, just like it does on the actual Megazord itself. At the moment, I would suggest you ignore the silver duct tape on the mouth, because at that time, I thought that would be enough, but it wasn't. So just ignore that. We'll get to it later. As you can see from the paper helmet that I made, I grabbed another piece and cut a U-shape into it, and I taped it into place. After you do that, you'll want to fill in the rest of the crown area with uh, another piece of cardboard. And be sure to make it completely level at the top. Now I'm sure you already noticed that with this added growth on the forehead and all around, you will have partially covered your head there. But that's okay. We need it that way. In fact, we want it that way. Because believe it or not, the top of the head that you just made earlier is not going to be where that crest sits on. In fact, we need to create a dome to go over it. The reason why is the dome that sits right at that point is a lot broader than what it is on your head. So we have to create a dome to sit on it. Now you could do what we did earlier by making the crown, but the truth is I'm terrible with making circles, especially this way. So I had to take a different approach. Here's what I did. So I dug out an old helmet that I got from a flea market and I covered it with painter's tape. Now if you ever worked with painter's tape before, you know that this stuff is easy to put on and very easy to peel off. That's why I chose it. But you will have to put on several layers. That way it'll stay together when you pull it off. But before you do, you need to cover the entire thing with black duct tape. Make sure you get all the green covered. In fact, I would put two or three layers on there just in case. After that, carefully pull it off the helmet and then put it into place and duct tape it down with black duct tape. I would recommend covering the entire top area with black duct tape altogether. That way you can get right inside of that U shape because remember that area was black. Plus the layer of black duct tape on the top will add structure to it. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the crest that sits on the top of the head. For this part, I recommend you get a piece of paper and try to draw out a basic shape and cut it out. When you do that, carefully set it on the top of the head to make sure it'll sit right. You may have to make a few more snips along the way, but it's worth the effort because when you got it just the way you want it, you're gonna have to sketch it on a piece of cardboard three times. After you draw and cut the three pieces out, duct tape them together. It should look something like this. Next, grab a small piece of cardboard and cut a triangle shape, something like this. This is gonna be the back of your crest. Once you got it to the right size, duct tape it into place. After that, cut a small triangle shape like this. This is gonna be the very tip right in the front there. So you need it to look like this. We're going to cut another piece similar to that, except it's going to be a lot bigger. It'll look pretty much like this. Of course, when you got it to the shape you want it, you're going to have to roll it. That way it'll give it that perfect curve that the crest had right in the front. 
When you got those cut to the right size, and of course when you got that longer part curved out, duct tape them into place. It should look like this when you're done. Next, cover the tip and the front of the crest with yellow duct tape, and cover the rest of it with red duct tape. Next, put it into place on top of the dome and tape it down. Now the easiest way to do this is to tape down the front with yellow, and tape down the rest of it with red. Be sure that the yellow duct tape goes almost all the way down to the bottom of the dome. After that, cover the red duct tape that's sitting on the dome with black duct tape. And cover a good part of the yellow duct tape until you get this shape on the dome. When you're done, it should look like this. And now we're going to work on the horns. And sadly, I have to demonstrate with paper because those pictures were lost too. Anyway, what you want to do is get four strips of cardboard. Now, the size depends upon you. You could have it wide, you could have it thin. I chose to go for a thin one. For the paper, I made it wide just for the point of demonstration. Anyway, you're going to need four smaller strips for the base of the horns and four longer strips for the middle part of the horns or the main shaft, whatever you want to call it. We're going to start with the base of the horns first. And it goes like this. Cut them to the size that you want and duct tape them together like this. It should look something like a diamond shape when you're looking right down. Next, we do the same thing for the longer shaft. Again, when you're done, it should look diamond shaped on the inside. Okay, now we're going to put the two pieces together. First, what we do is we take the smaller one and make a diagonal cut at the end. We do the same for the longer shaft as well, after a little measuring and comparing, of course. Once again, it all depends how you want the horns to curve up, so you're really going to have to measure how you have this set. It'll probably take a little trial and error before you get it to just the right curvature you want, but you can do it. Once you're satisfied the way the pieces sit next to each other, tape them together. Next, we're going to work on the tips, and that's really quite simple. Just cut yourself four triangles and duct tape them together. You'll have to cut and shape them at the bottom, that way it'll curve up to a fine point. And again, it all depends how you want it to curve. Once you're satisfied with the tips, duct tape them on to the long shaft. When you're done, it should look something like this. Repeat this entire process one more time and you got two horns. Next, you'll want to cut a diagonal at the bottom of both of the horns. That way you can fit it properly onto the helmet. Once you got the horns set just the way you want it, duct tape them into place. Once you got the horns in place, grab some gray duct tape and tape it right here, up and down both horns. You'll also want to use gray duct tape going across the forehead right here. Make sure that the duct tape on the forehead connects with the gray duct tape on the horns. You don't have to use one single piece of duct tape. All you got to do is just make it look like it's all connected. After that, cover the horns with red duct tape and cover the temples, the sides, the front, and the back of the head with red duct tape as well. But be sure not to cover the dome or the U shape, and most importantly, leave a narrow gap of gray duct tape visible. All right, now we're gonna work on the neck guard. First, what you need to do is grab yourself a big square piece of cardboard, place your helmet right on top of it, and trace around it. Cut out the circle that you traced, Place the helmet back in the center of the cardboard so you can determine where you need to cut next. Where the armor part of the cheek pieces ends, that's where we're going to cut. When you cut them off, it should look something like this. After that, you'll want to cut the rest of the cardboard off into this odd horseshoe shape. Place the horseshoe on the helmet like this and make sure it looks right. If it doesn't look right, you may have to cut off some edges a little. When you're satisfied with it, duct tape it into place, both on the bottom and definitely on the sides. Next, cut yourself some small square pieces of cardboard and duct tape them into place. When you're done, it should look like this. After that, cut yourself some triangular pieces and use them to fill in the gaps. This will give that neck armor a sloping effect. Now, you could use thicker cardboard, but I found that the simple cardboard from a pop box worked perfectly. It was easy to cut, easy to adjust, and plus it didn't bulge out like regular cardboard would. Once you got it all into place, cover the edges with gray duct tape. Of course, you'll want to cover the cheek pieces around the eye right here. After that, fill in the rest of the neck armor with black duct tape. I would recommend having the black duct tape go to the bottom of the horns all the way down to however thin you want the gray to be. And of course, have the red duct tape meet to the bottom of the horns. I would also recommend covering the underneath side of the neck armor with black duct tape. When you're done, it should look something like this. Now we're going to work on the eyes. Now, as you remember, the Megazord's eyes were yellow. 
and obviously we need to see out of this, so this proved to be an interesting challenge. What I did was I bought a yellow pair of clip-on sunglasses and duct taped it into place on the inside. After that, I cut some small pieces of cardboard for the nose and to go around the eyes to fill in those gaps and to even make it look a little more, uh, well, less like sunglasses. I suggest that you first cut the pieces and put them inside and see if they'll fit right. That way you can make adjustments before you commit yourself to duct tape. It took a little work, but this is the shape I ended up getting for around the eyes, and this is the shape I got for the nose. With the eyes, you'll want to cover it with black duct tape, and then cover the rest of it with red duct tape. As you can see, there's like a small half an inch of black duct tape around the sunglass part, and the rest of it is red. For the nose piece, just cover the entire thing with gray, and then cover it with red. Be sure to leave a line right in the center. At this point, you need to attach the nose right about here. When you tape it, you'll want to tape it on the inside. That way you won't have to do any touch-up work. And finally, we come to the mouthpiece. What you want to do is grab two rectangular pieces of cardboard and bend them right in the center. After that, line them up and duct tape them together. Next, cover the entire mouthpiece with silver duct tape. Then put it into place on the mouth and tape it down. Once again, you'll have to use red on the right spots. That way you won't have to fiddle with the eyes too much. And of course, you'll have to use gray on the side pieces. On the bottom, you can use the silver duct tape. And when you tape it down, be sure that the mouthpiece points outward just like this. Tape over any gray edges that might be touching the black where it shouldn't be. Next, we line up the nose with the mouthpiece, tape it down, and be sure to tape the top of the inside as well right here and here. When you got it taped down, just cover the mouthpiece with silver duct tape once again, and there you have your Megazord helmet. Now we got all our pieces, and now we look just like the Megazord. You can move very well, you got an awesome look, and most importantly, it didn't cost you too much, because it's just cardboard and duct tape. Of course, I know a few Power Rangers fans who will insist that we're not done yet, because we haven't created the Power Sword and the Shield. I'll show you how to make that real soon. This is Movie Fan, signing off.